How long were you on OnlyFans? Five years. And how much money do you think you made in total? $14 million. My dad encouraged me to stay on OnlyFans. Time out. Ex-pastor. Hold on. Yo. Wait a minute. Rewind the tape. What? All right, y'all. Crazy video from Lecrae. He interviewed Nala Ray, who we've covered on this channel before. Not sure if y'all remember or not. I'm sure a lot of y'all do, but um, she was doing content, explicit content, adult content, and gave her life to Jesus. Essentially turned down millions of dollars because she was making millions of dollars per year producing this content. Turned down that money to follow Jesus, which is beautiful, which is absolutely beautiful, right? As I said, we've covered this um, in the past. Now, come to find out, her dad was actually encouraging her to continue making this content, all because of this reason, which we're about to get into. And it's just absolutely insane to me that a father would encourage his daughter to keep exposing herself in that way just because she's making millions of dollars. And oh, by the way, her father used to be a pastor. Absolutely mind-blowing conversation. Let's just get to it. And then as always, we'll have a conversation. And your conscience at the time is not like bothered at all? I'd say it really started getting bothered when my family found out. And my, now how, do, how do they find out? So my dad said that someone at his work told him he didn't believe them. And then he called me and I was like, well, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. Yes, I'm doing this. My mom found out because she Googled the name Nala and then was like, it was so crazy. I was at dinner with them and some waiter comes up to me while I'm with my parents and is like, are you Nala Ray? And my mom's like, like, well, what? And Googles me and I'm like, Oh, oh wow. Gosh. It was the most embarrassing thing ever. But then like my mom like uh cut off contact with me cuz I then moved to California. We like didn't speak for like 3 years. My dad however was a very different story. My dad encouraged me to stay on only. Time out. Ex pastor. Hold on. Yo. Wait a minute. Rewind the tape. What? Because was, was he was he burned was, by the church? Was he not? Was, of course he was. Okay. He never brought that up really. But like for me, I was paying him. I was giving him money like every month because oh. like, you know, he's got a, such a hard life or he's like wants to quit his job or like his other kids need a divorce lawyer or custody over their first child or, you know, I'm like here, here, here. Which is crazy. Ex-pastor. You see that your daughter is coming out of darkness, headed towards the light. And you would prefer for her to stay in that darkness, potentially risking her soul in the process, all because you're getting a percentage of it. That's wild to me. And I don't want to be super disrespectful because... You know, I don't know Nala. I don't know her, her, her family, her parents, her dad specifically. So I don't want to be super disrespectful, but you know, the, what I'm learning more and more, especially as we see like all these pastors fall into scandal and all these pastors fall into sin, that pastor title, it's a very loose title nowadays. Just because somebody says they're a pastor doesn't necessarily mean that they're a man of God. It's unfortunate, but it's the truth. And I understand everybody's human. We all make mistakes. But, bro, we just be throwing around this pastor title like it's something to play with. And I think a lot of people find themselves in the pulpit when they probably shouldn't have been in the pulpit in the first place. But one thing led to another and they ended up there. And now they have the title of pastor where they should have never been in that position in the first place. Regardless, that's crazy. Every time he called me, it was like, hey, yo, I don't want to bother you about this. But like, I'm like, that's tough. Sure. I'm sorry. That's there you tough. Go. 
That's it's tough. so tough now. And during it, I was just like, oh, at least one person in my family is speaking to me. Yeah. But like now, I'm like, when I finally decided to follow Christ, I called my dad. My husband was right next to me. And I was like, hey, dads, I'm getting off of all fans. Like, blah, blah, blah. I was so excited. He was like, well, why don't you just stay on another year and a half and like make more money and, you know, like settle yourself in? Because, you know, it's really expensive right now. And I'm like, did you really just tell me to stay on all like, did you really just say that to yeah. your daughter? Did you really just tell me to continue making? We're going to pray that your transformation encourages dad. And he's like, wow. Wow. We're going to yeah. hey, listen. If he did it for you, he could do it for anybody. That's true. That's so true. we're going to pray for that. But I'm, I'm praying every day, man. So, it's so hard. So you said you were. That's a really good response, though. I mean, what else can you really do? I think also that just shows you know what the Bible says for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evilness. You want to see your daughter continue a life participating in evilness, soliciting evilness, selling and monetizing evilness that as a result is pulling so many other people into sin and keeping other people into bondage you want her to continue doing that for a check just because you're getting some money and this is a father this is a father and daughter that is beyond my comprehension <laughs> like for real i don't even know what to say Harris, when they found out mm -hmm. were were there any other people that found out and you were like oh my god or was it just parent mom and dad just or? mom and dad basically like my siblings i didn't really care too too much about like i okay. just wasn't thinking about it you know obviously it affected them in some way yeah but like for me i just didn't care those are like my siblings you know what i'm saying like yeah. i'm gonna do what i want you guys are doing what you want to do you know you guys are already popping out babies and with other people like I, i'm like uh, who are you. you to judge me you know so why did why does mom say i don't want to have any contact with you anymore like what's the so she just basically the last thing she said to me before i moved to california was like i hope like you're happy in all the choices you make, you know, and it was such a sarcastic, like mm. kind of way. And I was like, okay. Sounds well. like she was shielding herself from hurt. Absolutely. Cause she's yeah. like, I know I didn't raise you like this. I'm mm -hmm. like, but like, how did you raise me then? Yeah. Like it's easier to be like, I'm not going to deal with this. Oh yeah. Then to like deal with the constant pain mm -hmm. and reminder of seeing your child go down uh, a dark path. Facts. So. And I can only imagine, I don't have kids, so I can only imagine that pain. Yeah. I really, I really can't grasp it in my head. Yeah. So like, I understand, but that disconnect from her Oof. and like my family is what threw me into like, because mm. I was like, I got nothing else to lose. So F it. I'm out F here. It. I was like, let's go full send because I'm like, I can make more money anyway like this. And nobody seems to care about me anyway. I didn't have friends, didn't have my family. And if I did have my family, he's encouraging me to do it. So I'm like, cool. How long were you on only five years? And how much money do you think you made in total? 14 million. <laughs> Okay, I didn't gro like I grossed that. I didn't net that kind of Still, thing. Still, like I know, you generated fourteen million dollars. Yeah. Wow, you generated like multiple people's lifetime of money. I make athletes money. That's crazy. NFL player over here. No, I'm just kidding. Now, for the person, the person who's watching this or listening to your story, and they're like. Dang, I could make that money. Oh, man. It comes with the price of your soul. Come on. Break it down. Where does it? You're in L.A. You're bald. Wait, before you even get to how it breaks down. how Because because people never hear the, they, truth. The, the emptiness of it all. Oh, man. So talk about. Let's just talk about. Let's the, talk about it. Talk about I'm first, first talk about the highlight reel. First talk about like. Living it up. Right. Oh, yeah. So I'm living in a $3.4 million house alone. So my rent was like. 16k a month mm. i was driving a porsche had 
super crazy designer bags. Like I went to other places in the world to go buy my designer bags. So like one of a kind or one of this or, and I had my closet, every room in my six bedroom home was stuffed full of clothes, all my clothes, like had it all, had a wicked gaming setup because I, I love playing Call of Duty, you know. <laughs> Shout out to the COD people. Shout out, <laughs> please sponsor me. But, <laughs> but um, had it all. Like I had my two dogs, I was chilling, I was single, yeah. like making millions. Yeah. Like it just didn't feel, like they call California La La Land for a reason. Mm-hmm. You are stuck in a cloud mm. of just like not even knowing what day it is. I smoked a lot of yeah. Like every day was high. Yeah. You know, I never got into drinking, but I was so high every day. You think you needed to do that to oh, like yeah. shut your conscience down? From, to be numb. Yeah. I felt a lot of things, but I needed to be numb to focus on my work. Wow. You know, and it did. I started taking Adderall for a while and smoking just like get this little yeah. more of a high. I had to stop taking that because my heart rate was too fast. <laughs> you know, felt like I was going to have a heart attack. But you got but essentially no family. No family, no friends. Because everyone in California is fake. Right. There's no one who's there who's like your Especially real friend. Especially in the industry. No, right. not at all. Like they're all like, oh, hi. Like, oh my God. And you're like, okay. And uh, I just spent almost every day, like inside my house, like just making content. You know, I never got sick of it. I was just at home. I learned, um, I started taking martial arts, um, did fight scenes. I learned bow staffing, nunchucks, samurai stuff. Like I had all the time and money to do just cool stuff yeah. and I started taking Japanese. And I was just like, oh man, like this is, I'm living the life. I can pay for all of my hobbies. Mm-hmm. Like, and I get to stay at home mm-hmm. and it was just, it felt good. But again, I was so calloused mm. over, like you couldn't say anything that would hurt my feelings. Yeah. I was so high. Like, so you, I didn't care. You couldn't even tap into your emotions. Not in the least bit. I, w- yeah. I didn't cry. I swear for like two years, like yeah. didn't feel mm. anything. Like yeah. I felt a lot of rage. That's why I started boxing, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, just getting into like all these physical stuff. Like I hit the gym so hard. Yeah. Like, and I just, I wanted, I had like anger, yep. but not like feelings, you know, it's funny. I wasn't happy. I was just like mellow. mellow. Yeah. There's a book I read called the body keeps the score. Cause I was, very- which is crazy because <clears throat> you would think at that level of success that she was experiencing, as she said, making millions of dollars per year, you're making athlete money, you're making, you know, you're making 1% money. You would think that that level of success from a a world's perspective would give you all the happiness that you could ever desire. But yet still in that success, she felt as if she had to numb herself to it by doing drugs, by purchasing extravagant purses and cars and living in a $3.2 million home. Like you would think having the success would make you happy, but she still had to numb herself with all of this other stuff. I said this and I'll say it again. It's all vanity. It's all vain. Everything under the sun is vain. It's meaningless. It's here today. It's gone literally tomorrow. It's meaningless. If you do not know God, everything under the sun is meaningless. It means nothing. It literally means nothing. So you can accumulate all of the riches of this, all of the riches of the riches, all of the riches of this world could be yours, but if you don't know God, it doesn't matter. You're gonna be empty. You're gonna be constantly trying to fill that void with stuff, with things, with more income. And you're gonna find that you are in a worse off place than you were before. You're gonna find that you were better off when you were broke, as opposed to having millions of dollars but not knowing God. I'm going to let y'all finish this uh, episode on his podcast because I don't want to 
react to the whole podcast, but I specifically wanted to go to that part in the video where she was talking about her dad, because I just found that to be so interesting. And it just speaks to the danger of falling in love with money. It never ends well. Money's not bad. Money itself is not bad. It's literally a tool that can be used for all types of good. Just because you're rich doesn't mean you're evil. But when you start to worship it and fall in love with your money, with your success, that's when you get into trouble. Let me know what y'all think. Get in my comments, like this video. I'm out, y'all.